Hey everyone, it's Michael from Chess Lifestyle. So a lot of chess enthusiasts have heard of this like grandmaster title, but very few people actually know what is required to achieve it. And like even as a player myself, I didn't realise how little I knew about the specifics. But yeah, I did a bunch of research into it, so I hope by the end of this video you'll have a better idea of how to obtain a grandmaster title. Very basically, there are two main requirements to reach a Grandmaster title. Firstly, you need to gain a 2500 FIDE rating. And secondly, you need to obtain three Grandmaster norms. Now, firstly I want to talk a bit about the ratings. So, a 2500 rating in OTB over the board chess is not exactly the same as a 2500 rating online. I would say that there's about a 200 points disparity between them. So a 2700 online player would be more like a 2500 uh, player in real life. And also something that a lot of people don't realize is that getting a 2500 rating in real life is a lot harder because once you hit 2300, your growth in terms of winning games and gaining rating points is a lot slower because there's this uh, multiplier um, called a K factor and the K factor essentially reduces from 20 to 10. So the growth you gain from each win is effectively halved. Now there's, there is a good side of this as well which means like once you hit 2300 you can't tilt as easily because since the K factor is halved you also lose less for losing games. But okay, let's say you hit 2500, what about these three Grandmaster norms? So a GM norm is effectively scoring a high performance in a tournament that has a very competitive field of opponents. But the intricacies and actual specific details of what is required uh, within the tournament and also your field of opponents is actually a lot more complicated than I once thought. And yeah, it was only when I was studying for my FIDE after exam that I actually learned about these specifics. So I thought I'd use a PowerPoint to help explain the GM title in more detail. So uh, in this first slide, you will see that a minimum of nine games, and this can either be nine games, 10 games, or 11 games. And these games have to be standard play games that exceed 90 minutes plus 30 seconds of move. Apart from that, uh, there are then a bunch of requirements about the opponents. So we see here that 50% uh, must be title holders, uh, excluding CM or WCM. So that includes uh, FM, IM, WIM, WGM, WFM, um, and GM, of course. Uh, so yeah. Out of your nine opponents, 50% must be title holders. One third must be the title holder um, that you are trying to seek. So in this case, if we're going for GM norm, then uh, a third of our opponents must be GM titled. Another indicator is that uh, only up to 20% can be unrated opponents. That's kind of a rare one. And then we also have some stuff about the federation. So you can't have more than two thirds from one the same federation or 60% from your own federation. And the reason for that is to kind of avoid like any kind of match fixing within the country to try and like help players like get a GM title more easily. So yeah, and then the final one is a minimum of two federations other than norm seekers own. So uh, you need to have a diversity of uh, opponents. So this is like the requirements for the event itself. There are some uh, exceptions. I think the main one is this. So like if you play in a really big tournament where you end up just by chance like playing a bunch of people from one federation or your own federation, even though the tournament was very diverse, there is an exception where if you have 20 FIDE rated players from at least three federations, um, and 10 of these uh, federated players are GM, IM, WGM or WIM, the player is exempt from the kind of foreigner requirements uh, listed here. So yeah, moving on. Now we've talked about specifics of the tournament, then the performance rating is also a big factor. So to reach GM, you need to get a minimum performance of 2599.5. So effectively 2600 must be your performance. And 
that was a shock to me because you know you only need to reach 2500 rating but for each norm you need to perform at 2600 you effectively need to be performing at a 2600 gm if you want to reach a gm title and um of this performance your average opponent um must be above 2380 uh and then yeah your performance is um the average rating of the opponents plus a rating difference and the rating difference if we see this example here there's basically this big uh chart that says depending on your score you get this rating bonus so your rating bonus is uh, a number of points that will be added to your average field of opponents to give you your rating performance and uh, that rating bonus will be decided depending on how well you score in the tournament. So if we look at this example, um, this player who is pushing for a GM norm scores 7 out of 9 and 7 out of 9 is 0.78 so if we look on the table uh, we see here 0.78 is 220 points. So since the average field was 2422, that exceeds the 2380 average requirement. And the rating performance, if we do 2422 plus 220, then we get 2643, which is above 2600. Uh, and also if we look at the number of titles and we look at the number of nationalities, um, all of these requirements are exceeded, so the GM norm is achieved. Now if we look at a very uh, similar example where the player scored only 6.5 out of 9, not 7 out of 9, if we see this probability of 0.72, if we look at the table and we go to 0.72, that's a rating bonus of 166. 166 plus the average opponents gives a rating of 2589, which is not above the 2600 requirement. So even though this player has played five GMs in the tournament, has scored six and a half out of nine, which I would think is a very strong performance. This is not enough for the GM norm. Now, finally, you also have this thing called rating flaws. So effectively, if you beat a player or you play a player who is, let's say, below 2200 in, the, in this case, um, they, when you do the rating calculation for the GM norm, you will actually adjust that rating uh, to 2200 as a minimum. Minimum. So it basically avoids, uh, let's say you're playing in a big Swiss tournament and round one uh, you play someone much, much lower rated than you. Um, it's kind of unfair if like you're a 2400 player, let's say you're pushing for GM and because of that first round performance, against someone much lower rated it suddenly brings your average down so they're just trying to be nice and they say for the lowest player they um, increase that floor to 2200 if that makes sense so if we look in this example again um, the only difference here is that uh, the round four opponent is 1800 um, so if we calculated the average and calculated the score of 7 out of 9, this would actually be under 2600 and the player wouldn't achieve uh, the GM norm. But since uh, you raised the floor uh, from 1800 to 2200, uh, you calculate the average again, you calculate the performance, you look at the rating bonus and you'll see that the player does achieve the GM norm. So this is um, another factor to consider when trying to calculate uh, whether you're in for a chance to get a GM norm. So speaking of exceptions, uh, there's a couple more exceptions uh, that I should talk about. So sometimes uh, you may have a, a really big event and if you do really well in it, that can sometimes um, even give you the title immediately. I believe the world under 20, if you win it, you get the title. Um, if you reach the last 16 in the FIDE World Cup, you also just given, get given a title straight out. I feel like giving titles normally happens for the, like, the lesser titles, such as like IM, FM. There's like more cases where that exists. There's another situation where in the Olympiad, effectively, if you qualify for a GM norm, you get double. So yeah, you basically get two GM norms for one. Uh, just for the Olympiad, I'm not too sure why. Uh, but I guess it's a very prestigious event and it promotes countries where players may not typically get the opportunity 
to play in tournaments to get these titles to actually achieve these titles so yeah in conclusion it's really hard to get the GM title I mean I know of one example this uh, English uh, international master called Lauren de Costa he came to my university to give a talk and he told us how he got all three GM norms but his peak rating was 2499 and because it wasn't above the 2499.5 threshold he didn't get the title and since then his rating went down so yeah it's really it can be really brutal and i think with that in mind really like when you're improving at chess try and forget about the titles try and forget about the ratings just focus on enjoying the game improving your chess and in doing so your level will improve and then you won't have to rely on like just scraping in like you'll just comfortably get whichever title you're aiming for. So always try and aim a bit higher than what you actually want to achieve. I think that is some useful advice. So yeah, I hope that was interesting. Um, if you liked this kind of video, I can do more videos uh, with Dylan like uh, about like certain rules of chess. Like I can also discuss like the title requirements for like IM, FM, WIM, WGM, CM, a whole lot. Also, if you have any questions regarding the GM title, feel free to comment below. And if you've learned something new, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, one subscribe equals one future GM. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.